the truth is when you're that much of a favor and you're looking at the rest of the division does that get you out of bed in the morning that division was made for her anyways and i think the entirety of her reign was a complacent reign when lauren murphy got a title shot against valentina that sums up the entire fucking division i understand that she had lost two fights to amanda nunez but the last fight, you could argue that she won as well. Now, when she was on that much of a run to drop down a division to fight a fighter in Joanna Jenjacek, who had already lost pretty significantly to Rose, who was coming up a weight class, and she'd already had two wins over Joanna as well. Yeah, but this, I, I feel like that was a great idea. That was a new division. Whenever you build a new division, there's not immediate challengers. And now you also- So why do it? Because now you have great challengers in that division. That division's only got to that point now where you're getting those great contenders. Like Erin Blanchfield looks like she could fight for a title shot two fights ago. There's about four people who are all really competitive into a high level Level that can challenge Grasso if she's to retain a title. Whereas, yeah, for a while, I never saw an attraction there because it kind of felt like she is the, the the most elite person in the division. But what's better for a division having a dominant champion that then helps promote the division? Or Yes, fine. The division is what it is. But arguably, it's down to Valentina for not testing herself. That's the argument that I'm trying to make. It's for the last two or three years, she has not tested herself. At no point has she said, do you know what? I want to have another crack at the bantamweight division. Now that Amanda's gone as well makes all the sense in the world for her fuck it okay now she's gone she was the only girl that I could not beat in that division it's my time to now seize that belt but honestly 135 has felt weaker than but that's what I'm saying 125 it's the perfect opportunity for Valentina to go back up to that weight class and take that throne the throne that has been built by Ronda Rousey that's been built right by Amanda okay I suppose that is a reason why it's more important the legacy of the 135 yeah. division I think 125 is a better division there's more now interesting it is, yeah, yeah. now it is yeah, yeah now it is. I feel like if you want to make an argument that she's been complacent because the challenges haven't been of good quality, I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I think you're, that's fine to say. You are made up of the opponents that you have. If she was in the bantamweight division, if she was fighting killers and testing herself against you know, the best. And I know, you know, you could argue that the best is no longer there at 135. Do you not think she was undersized for Bantamweight? I always thought she was undersized. Maybe she was, but like she was still winning. Yeah, she, she was. was still putting on dominant performances and winning against former champions. But as it well. doesn't help that Nunez cleared out that division. So it's kind of like who was there really even to fight when Holly Holm is almost getting another title shot. It's like, I mean, I know I keep going back to Lauren Murphy. No disrespect to Lauren Murphy, but I just don't think she was ever a title challenger. And the only reason she made it to the titles because there was no one else. She got a six fight win streak in a division, a very thin division, right? She beats Joanne Calderwood and fights for a title. So like that says it all really, it really does. But when there is no one else and she is on a six fight win streak, I can see why they threw her in there for a title, especially when she was actually the girl that was like, I want a title shot, give me a title You have shot. to do it at that point. But prior to that as well, what's Valentina doing? If you're the fucking champion, you're looking down at your rankings and being like, bloody hell, Lauren Murphy <laughs> is on a six fight win streak and she she looks like she's going to be the next title challenger or i could go fucking hell this division sucks ass i'm going to go up to the bantamweight division i'm going you're to fucking just, fight some i like people. that you're just mad that she didn't go up to bantamweight because to me honestly i just wanted her to challenge us wait, wait, wait. i was never fucking interested in a shevchenko title yeah defense. to be honest there, give me one fucking fight on her in her entire flyweight champion career where you where you sat there and you're like i can't wait for this because it's a fight with stakes someone's gonna fucking challenge shevchenko the santos fight i was pretty yeah but I was, no, you I was, weren't you oh, weren't no, no, no hang on yeah hang no on. we all sat here we all sat here and went who the fuck is tyler santos and i gave you and loads then, of reasons why she was no, a dangerous no, no, fighter no, no, no. this is what i said before the fight she has muay thai to compete on the outside she has a ground game that no one else does that she fights so she can compete there as well she's getting submission wins before that fight i'm not saying oh i'm so excited for this fight but that was the first fight in a while that i was excited to see the moment i realized this new flyweight division was fucked was when jessica i was getting a title shot you're all making arguments about like literally the second title fight in the division it's a new division it's made up of people transitioning they didn't start this division like oh it's gonna be full of contenders it takes time to get to this point and arguably as soon as she then fights someone who is an actual 
actual contender built herself into the, the the prime version of her as a fighter so now she's finally fighting these people who are actually proper 125ers who have made their way through the division and the division is established she's losing the major point stays is that i think valentina has been a complacent champion she's never seemed to have tested herself she was just kind of just given what she was given it just all i'm saying it just felt like easy route for a, a fighter at her level to take i think she should have been a bantamweight challenger and potential champion why would she do that because there's more legacy in that i think she has a legacy dude but does she though against who okay i get what you're saying it's not a strong yeah, that's legacy. the thing it's like when you talk about like dominant title reigns like fucking anson silver you just tick off those names valentina when you look back at her legacy what does it mean really it means that she was a dominant champion in a division that didn't have anyone if nico montagno built her name in that division as the champion that would make sense a new champion that was also trying to build their name as well and if that belt was flip-flopping around between nico montagna and other people then that would be interesting but just to have this looming fucking sauron over over everyone <laughs> staring down at everyone i think it was just like this sucks it's kind right. of there's no to... challenge here there's nothing to get excited about because we know valentina is just gonna win i don't know if i would use the word complacent because she obviously takes do you think she got better after becoming the flyweight champion i think she has got better yeah do, do you she honestly got much better on when the ground. she when she fought nunez when she beat holly harm and then when she beat Pena, you think she dropped down to the flyweight division became the champion and she got better for fighting the girls that it's, she was fighting. it's kind of hard to say because like the competition no. maybe isn't as exactly like, like no. about nunez if you're not being challenged i think it's she like did any get fucking better, it's any fucking sport if you are not being challenged and you're not being put in awkward situations in every fight you i don't think you're getting better yeah, but like when she fought that holly home fight she fought on the back foot the whole time she was exactly. just a kickboxer and all she did was counter with the the lead right hook exactly because she had to right okay because so the danger of what Holly Holm right, brought but then to that fight. When she went to 125, she started becoming this dominant wrestler. Because she could do whatever the fuck right, she okay, wanted so, against these but people. I'm like, to me, She's like, do you know what? Fuck it, I'm going to wrestle on this one because I can because this girl sucks ass. To me, she, that's her getting better then. Like, it's I don't hard think to it say. is. But that's like I, think it's, to say I think it's like a fucking black belt rolling with a fucking blue belt. Yeah, but then... And going... Do you know what this would be? I'm going to pick up a few easy wins here because I'm in a blue belt competition. Okay, but guess like, what? I'm a black belt. It's, but then it's also just like, why wouldn't you go to 125 and win a belt and dominate people? Because it's about, and just be like, Fuck it's, it. yeah, it's about the legacy you want to leave, isn't it? If you can go through all that adversity and struggle against Holly Holm, who's this really long kickboxer, and your tools are very limited, but you managed to pull off an armbar, that's a great story because she went through the adversity and found a way to make it work. If you just like be like, Right, guys, I'm gonna go down and just, just do the I think easy kickboxing. This is what thing. I'm saying. It's not easy to fucking beat like seven people in a row. If she stayed at bantamweight and managed to get a third fight with Nunez, which would have been hard to do maybe because she'd already lost twice but maybe they would have done it and then if she beat her and then if she was able to defend the title then yes but what happens if none of that happened and she lost again and then she took a few more fights and never became a champion how is that a better legacy than six or seven title defenses i would have preferred to see her lose in fights that she really had something to lose yeah. than fights where it was just kind of like well she's probably going to win this one i think she has got a really good legacy as as a champion the credibility of the opponents is questionable that's fair enough but that doesn't stop her from being offered the opportunity to fight in that weight class from being the girl who was still better than everyone in that weight class made those fights look easy because of how good she is as a martial artist and was able to defend the title multiple times which is not easy to do for anyone you know going up to fight nunez for the trilogy that would have been a great fight i would have been more excited for that but i will never take anything away from them what she did because i can't be upset with someone for being miles ahead of everybody else because of her elite skill set because of a lifetime of muay thai because of her evolution to be able to take down those people as a striker and beat them up and you're saying she could have been better if she was challenging herself as yeah. a fighter yeah okay i can agree with that that's all I'm I can. Saying. I can get on board. All right, with that. we'll have a handshake. <laughs> so we have uh, Shevchenko versus Grasso coming up this weekend, oh, and something great to do with the fights is have a little drink alongside. And what's better than the official sponsor of the UFC, Howlhead? There isn't anything better. Nothing. No. Exactly. So if you want to get your own, get down to a larger Tesco's, pick some up. Or if you don't want to go out, you can shop online at Master of Malt and Amazon. All the information you need is down in the description below. Follow those links and get yourself some Howlhead.
Thank you to everyone who's a channel member on the channel. We appreciate you. We know you've been enjoying the extra content, podcast episodes, etc., whatnot. Uh, the writers meeting, of course, you guys can jump in there as well. But if you do want to be part of the family, click the join button down below. You can do so. It's real cheap and it helps us do cool things.